Hello everyone, it's Albert, and in the last video I dealt with Acharya S and the crucifixion of Horus. In this video, it's a similar topic only with a different god, the Phrygian god Attis, often associated with Sibel, and often associated with castrating himself, not being crucified. But Acharya S claimed he was crucified in a number of places, and in fact that that was one of the claims in the film Zeitgeist that that Addis had been crucified. Uh, D.M. Murdoch, who go, go, also writes under the name of Charia S, in fact, in this case, didn't redefine the term as she did with Horace, but actually gave a reference to a castrated and crucified Addis as evidence that the pagan deity was believed to be crucified long before Jesus. Uh, her source was a book titled Textual Strategies Perspectives in Post-Structuralist Criticism by Josu V. Harari, and I, I um, apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name. Uh, and I've dealt with this in the past, but I wanted to add this to the collection of, from, of things from my book, since it also appears there, but I, and give a summary of everything that happened. Now, since that particular book, the Textual Strategies book, was published by Cornell University Press, it certainly met the test of being an academic source. However, you might question whether it, the source had any expertise in this particular area. It turns out Dr. Harari is a professor of French and Italian uh, in, at Emory University in Atlanta, and hence really ha doesn't appear to have any expertise in ancient religion. I mean. I'm certain he's an expert in French and Italian literature, but neither of those languages existed at the time that people were worshipping Attis. Um, so, and particularly this book dealt with literary criticism, at least from the title, given that this was a field that Dr. Harari is apparently part of. And so you wondered what this had to do with Attis in the history of religion. And it was Dr. Harari here... Uh, foraging into an area where he really had no expertise. Um, and so I was curious, and, and particularly since, of course, one of the things that issues that would have to be raised, if Dr. Rari did in fact write this, did he cite a source? Um, you know, so so that I needed to be able to check this, and and I found a copy of the book, and and at a library, and, and looked at it, and um, it turns out things weren't quite Surprise, not surprisingly, things weren't quite what Murdoch claimed. Now, this is interesting because in the past, Murdoch has been accused of citing books she found in Google book searches without actually reading the context of the passages. Certainly, I, as I will demonstrate throughout these videos, there is lots that she cites that are that is completely ripped out of context. Uh, now, whether she actually read the original sources or not, I have no way of knowing, and in particular in this one, but um, so, but certainly one could raise the possibility that she never read this book. Uh, one could also raise the possibility that she didn't understand what was going on here. Um, and that and that, but of course, I, in either case, that that doesn't sit, bode well for her status as someone to investigate these matters and and for the level of her scholarship. In in any case, so um, either way, it's it's fairly damning. So I. I so that it doesn't really matter in that case whether she actually read the book or not, since you know the, it. But it's hard to believe once you read what's going on that anyone would read that and use it as evidence of Addis being crucified, as we shall see. Um, it turns out that <clears throat> that the author in this case is not reaching beyond his expertise in a particular field. Um, as his, it turns out his topic is not even Addis as he would have been known to the ancients. It also turns out that the author was not Dr. Harari. Um, Dr. Harari was the editor of a volume of academic papers. That's what this textual strategies book is. It's a volume of academic papers. Dr. Harari wrote the introduction. Now, the, the citation of Addis, the only one in the book, comes on page 131. Now, if I remember correctly, Murdoch had actually cited page 31, uh, but Addis doesn't appear there at all. And even if you search it on Google, you'll find that 
Addis does not appear on page 31. But given 31, 131, that's easily explainable as a typo. That's uh, that, so that, that's I'm not making any 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 issue with that. However, on page 131, where Addis does appear, and the only place in the book where Addis does appear, um, we we run into a little problem. You see, first of all, and this is the mind, this is a smaller problem. Dr. Harari is not the author. Um, as I said, this was a volume of academic papers, and page 131 is in the midst of a paper by another textual critic named Paul Deman, who's a, a post-structuralist textual critic, and he's, was, he wrote a paper, which apparently is fairly well known in that field, called Semiology and Rhetoric. And he was, and he, and this paper appeared here. It also appears elsewhere. It's even available in JSTOR if you have access to that. So th there, there is, there is the. It, so the, it it is a fairly well known paper, and the but that that's not the the, the only problem um, because the subject that Paul Demon and that's the minor problem. This the real problem is that the subject that Paul Demon is dealing with is not Addis as he would have been known to the ancients, but Ad, but the character Addis. Who, as he appeared in a passage of a 20th century poem by William Butler Yeats. Uh, while that poem made use of the ancient pagan deity Attis, it did not detail ancient beliefs, but used Attis to metaphorically illustrate the transition between the classical pagan world and the medieval Christian world that would follow through the placement of Attis's dying body. Um, so, Right away, you have a major, major problem here because anyone who reads that poem cannot look at that and say this has anything at all to do with ancient, pe ancient people in the Roman Empire or any ancient people anywhere else believing that Attis was crucified. The poem Demon was discussing was William Butler Yeats' poem Vacillation, which looks back at the this period of transition between the ancient world and the Christian world to follow, and as and uses the mythology of Attis, who dies near a tree. Yeats has him falling between leaves. Here we can see where it says, in half all glittering flame and half all green, and then later it mentions his, and he that Addis's image hangs between that staring fury and the blind lush leaf. So he's using this imagery to imagine Addis like from arm to arm in in a sort of pseudo crucifixion pose, using the the dying leaves and the living leaves as sort of the as a seg, as a metaphor for the segue, the transition of the the two eras. Uh, to mark the ch and so uses the changing of the seasons to mark the changing of the times in this second stanza, and um, thus Addis is used to signal the death of the pagan world, and Yeats uses the imagery of him hanging between the two worlds, through with you, him hanging between the two le types of leaves, and its allusion to a crucifixion type pose to mark the phase when he. Addis and the pagan gods were replaced by Jesus and Christianity. Now, this imagery in a poem less than a century old could not possibly be considered evidence of an ancient belief in Addis's crucifixion. And in fact, as you see in the poem, he actually isn't crucified. It's just something sort of metaphorically signaling a crucifixion pose. Uh, it is this poem that, in fact, is and I just showed you the, stand, the relevant stanza of the poem. But if we go to Demand's article, it is this poem by De, and by Yeats, and not some ancient pagan parallel that Demand is referring to. Um, if one goes to that cited article, you do not find a reference to the castrated and crucified Addis of in antiquity, but refers to the context of this poem and not ancient mythology. As you see, it says the oneness of trunk, leaf, and blossom, for example, that would have appealed to Goethe would find itself replaced by the much less reassuring tree of life from the Mabinagonian that appear, appears in the poem Vacillation, appears in the poem Vacillation, in which the fiery blossom and earthy leaf are held together as well as apart by the crucified and castrated Addis, of whose body it can hardly be said that it is not pleased to pleasure the soul. 
Thus, the citation is not dealing with Attis as given in ancient mythology at all, but rather Attis as given in a 20th century poem by William Butler Yeats. Even the poem does not have a literal crucifixion, but as I said, uses imagery as a transition segue between the pagan and Christian eras. Thus, Murdoch's attempt at conjuring evidence for an ancient belief in Attis's crucifixion is quite laughable, and it indicates that perhaps she never really read the book she cited. Uh, and that brings us sort of, you know, it, it almost becomes a joke, you know, where you, you hear the one about, uh, about Addis, Acharya S. and William Butler Yeats, a joke that we imagine Murdoch and her followers would not find amusing. And here we come to the punchline, and I don't imagine they're too pleased with it. When I first presented the evidence that you've just seen in the video thus far, I was not sure what the reaction would be from the Acharya S side of things and her fans. And I thought it a possibility and, and that they would just simply ignore it. And let's not draw attention to something that makes her look bad. Um, and that's what, kind of what I expected. I, I also thought that maybe someone would try to make some sort of excuse that, you know, it was an honest mistake or something. but. You see, it was it, to me. This was really quite damning evidence, um, because odds are, when you look at that passage and you look at how she's using it, um, and then you go to the Google Book search for it. And remember, she's in the past has been accused of basically using Google Book search as a research uh, that she gets helpful quotes out of the Google Book searches, but didn't necessarily read the book. She has been accused of that in the past, and and she's denied all of these accusations. But if you look at this particular book and look up the quote, if you search for Addis in the book, it ends up only in snippet form. So you can only see just the few words around this quote and not the entire context of the passage. So it does make you wonder if she ever actually saw it. But let's, let's say, give the benefit of the doubt, say she did read it. That's even worse, because that means either she is so incapable of proper research that she can't understand the words in front of her, or that she didn't care about the truth and was just presenting this stuff in the hopes that so nobody would catch her. And, and she, she knew that it, had, it was irrelevant to the state of religion in antiquity and that it had to do with a modern poem, but didn't care. I don't, I, I'm not going to answer that question. I really, I, I, you know, my initial reaction was that, frankly, she got it out of a Google book search. That's, uh, you know, that that's the first thing that comes to mind. But I, I you know, because I'm trying to assume that she has a degree. So I don't, and, and she, in fact, her degree was in classics, if I remember correctly. So I can't imagine she wouldn't understand what I showed to you if she read the passage. And I'm trying to assume the best that maybe she didn't, that she wouldn't be completely dishonest about what was on that page. Um, so it, it's not not looking really good for her side, uh, which is one of the reasons I thought probably no one would even react to it um, from her side of things. And that maybe that particular citation would just quietly go away from her material. Um, Although I would, of course, raise the issue now and then for fun. But I just can't imagine that someone would have actually said that that's not really on that page. Um, what you said is, is not true. Because to do that, they would, of course, have to get the book. Once they got the book and opened the page up, they would realize I, it was true. Um, and then what, what did they do then? Um, they, they, but in fact, someone did exactly that. Someone tried to deny everything I said, said I was completely wrong, I lied about everything, that, that this was all all dishonest. And, and so what, it, what I ended up having to do eventually is, and I'll, and I'll be, be showing you this on, in this video too, but the earlier video is still up, and I'm going to leave them up since other people have linked to them, is that I made a second video in which I literally, I got the book again, literally held the page up to the video camera 
and read it. <laughs> I mean, so everyone could see what I was reading, could see the page I was on, could see that I was, you know, everything. And I don't know what, at that point, since then, I haven't gotten a response, but uh, uh, any other responses. But but I, I thought that that was very telling, um, that her fans, her their reaction is simply to deny everything, to just lie, even though they don't know the truth. They haven't really looked at the book themselves, but simply make accusations against everyone else without ever examining the evidence. I mean, that... I mean, come to think, think of it this way. Dia Murdoch presented evidence saying that Addis was crucified. I went out and found her evidence and I looked at it and I said, no, it doesn't say that. And I gave my evidence that she was wrong. One would think that the correct response would be then to check my evidence to see if I'm correct. But instead, what they do is simply say I'm wrong without ever checking anything. And that's sort of the indication of the level of the level of interaction you will get with her fans. And that should indicate something. And I'm going to go into that now. When I made my initial video, it was linked to by someone on a conspiracy theorist website titled Above Top Secret. Now, I wasn't familiar with the website, and I don't have any problem with anyone linking to the video there. I just simply was not initially aware of the exchange. Here's my initial video. And what ended up happening then is it set off a discussion on the validity of the claims in the film Zeitgeist and also of the validity of the claims made in general by Dean Murdoch slash Atoria S. And it, it, it was the usual sort of discussion that if you've been involved in this at all, you've seen a million times. Until the second page, however, no one discussed my video. And I can understand this because they hadn't seen the evidence and had no real comment on it and that evidence was not actually part of the film zeitgeist since it was it, it was part of the source guide but was never no evidence it was ever really presented in zeitgeist to speak of um, but we get down to the a post by someone who goes under the moniker golden knight who's one of the a fanboys of acharya s apparently and like Many, who, or some at least, who who, in, who inhabit, her, inhabit her forums, their what method of argumentation to defend the drivel is to give links to more drivel. Basically, they give links to Achar threads in Acharya S's forums and, and articles she's written it's, and quotes by people saying nice things about her, etc. Uh, nothing that really says much about the evidence presented against her claims or the the examinations of the evidence that she's given particularly in, in this case the evidence that i had presented in that video and remember the video linked to a blog post where and that blog post had everything out in the open it, it, it listed all of the it gave all the quotes mentioned uh they could certainly read them for themselves and if if they had any doubt they could certainly find the book look at it and they'd see i was right and there was really no doubt about any of it um and and i couldn't imagine anyone would argue with it for at that level but this person did and of course as is the practice among fans of murdoch they begin by hurling insults at anyone who would dare question the sainted authority of miss murdoch and uh, and, and it, re this is, it really does get rather cultish, as I've said. And, and, and so he he's first complains about, you know, you're, he re this thread started off by regurgitating the crap from a known Christian apologist, Albert McElhinney, who's also Labyrinth 312 on YouTube. Um, okay. <laughs> now, the, 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 certainly I am a Christian apologist. Don't make any bones about that. And that is my name. And that is my YouTube account. And everyone's probably aware of that. And, um... The, the thing, though, that if you're going to say it's crap, you're going to have to prove it. 
uh, which of course he will never do in this article. He says nobody cares about his opinions except other fundy Christians. So I guess he considers me a fundy Christian, a rather odd label for an Anglican, but I suppose in his world, any believing Christian is a fundy Christian uh, who are too lazy to actually look things up for themselves, let alone actually study the subject. So I suppose then this person, Golden Knight, actually looked things up for themselves. They went to the book and saw what I said, saw if it was true or not, and so they're going to give the counter evidence, right? Um, and then he goes on to say a normal person would be ashamed to ever cite this guy Albert for anything. Well, let, let's just see how the evidence goes, shall we? Um, now, he then begins his counter evidence. What's interesting is, remember, my claim against her is that she's using a source that's referring to Addis in a 20th century poem and not in an, anything relating to antiquity. So what does he attack? He doesn't attack that. He tries to attack, wrongly by the way, but still tries to attack what I said about Dr. Harari being the editor of the volume rather than the author. But even if I were wrong, had been wrong about that and Harari had been the, the, the author of the quote in question, it still stands that she wrote about a, a reference to Addis from a 20th century poem as though it had it related to antiquity and it does nothing for his position and it, so so that that more or less was just gravy that wasn't the meat of the argument uh, but it did illustrate at least that perhaps she had not really seen the book that she was citing and that's and it's the Harari versus Daman Thing that gave that gave me some insight into the fact that perhaps she had never seen the book otherwise she would have known it wasn't Harari um, so what is he says he goes on to say that it it appears no one has checked into the claims that Albert himself makes because if you did you'd notice all all means all all of his complaints are erroneous for example his complaint his claim that Dr. Uzigi Harari is not the author, but merely an editor is wrong, as even a cursory check will show, that we all probably also did edit as well, which is not uncommon. Now, what is his evidence for this? He links to the Amazon page. And what he's going to, what I assume he was trying to say here, is because the Amazon page lists Harari as the author on the book. You see, he was Uzigi Harari, author. However, and by the way, I want you to notice I purchased this book, so I own it. And so I actually have a copy, and I've, I've seen it, unlike the person who made this response. Um, but what he doesn't realize, of course, is that Amazon frequently, frequently lists editors of volumes of academic papers as the author rather than the editor by in error. And that's the case here, as anyone could see by looking at the picture of the book, where it states textual strategies, perspectives, and post-structural criticism, edited and with an introduction by Hizu V. Harari, then it lists the contributors, and the third name on the list is Paul Daman, the very person who I stated was the author of the volume, the article in question, Semiology and Rhetoric. But of course, he doesn't know, he, 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 in his dishonesty, in, his, in this pathetic need to defend Murdoch at all costs, he's unable to grasp even what is right in front of his eyes. He's so obsessed <laughs> with defending her that he, it, it doesn't, the truth doesn't really matter. He never looked at this book, and now we'll see the evidence in full, in full. What we have here is the cover of the book, just so you can see it a little more clearly, and you'll notice it does say edited and with an introduction by Jose V. Harari, and right here under contributors, the third name on the list, Paul Daman. So in fact, that is the case. When we go to the inside cover again, you'll see Cornell University Press, and it's edited and with an introduction by Jose V. Harari. We go here to the table of contents, and remember, it's page 131, and if you look at the Paul DeMond's article, begins at page 121, ends at page 141, so page 131 falls in his article, Paul DeMond's Semiology and Rhetoric. And in fact, if we go to page 131, you'll notice it says Paul DeMond's Semiology and Rhetoric on the top of the page. And if you go down, the one, this is what I quoted. 
The oneness of trunk, leaf, and blossom, for example, that would have appealed to Goethe, would, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And if you go down, you'll see where it talks about the crucified and castrated god Addis, et cetera. In the poem right here, you'll see vacillation. In the poem, vacillation. So, it, in fact, it is about Addis as he appears in a 20th century poem titled Vacillation by William Butler Yeats. It has absolutely nothing to do with Addis or any beliefs about Addis in antiquity. And this, of course, knowing that it's here, you'll see Daman right at the type of the top of the page. It makes you wonder, given all of this, if she ever, in fact, read the book. Thus, we have the spectacle here of, of not only Murdoch initially making this tremendous blunder that's just uh, so blatantly obvious, but, but her fan trying to respond to this goes off making wild accusations without ever, ever looking at anything I, I, I had presented, never looked at the book. His, his, he didn't even tackle the question of, of the the poem and that vacillation and the reference in Demond's article, he tried to attack the fact that I said Harari was the editor of the book, but uh, and judged it by an Amazon listing. Didn't even look at the picture of the book on the very page to wh whose link he supplied. He didn't. It was right there in front of him. He didn't even see it. Well, I guess you could say he didn't judge a book by its cover, but he didn't judge it by its interior either. He didn't judge it by anything. He just made things up, um, <laughs> and and then makes all these accusations that everything I said was erroneous, but never checked anything that I said. Um, and and just to add to this, add to it the spectacle. He had the audacity to complain that it was Christians who were too lazy to actually look things up for themselves without ever once looking things up for himself. After I made my response in another video um, and held, as I mentioned, held the book up in my hand and read from it, uh, demonstrating Harari was editor and not the author and went to the page and read everything I said and held it up to the camera, he chose not to comment on that thread again. Um, I, I suppose some lessons are only learned through experience. Uh, and on that note, in all things, may to God be all the glory. And until next time, God bless.